need to understand that in Hebrew, the word coincidence is said mikre. In Hebrew, this word, which is found in the Torah, it's called mikre, coincidence. It just happened. But if you play with the letters, this tells you rak mehashem, only from the Almighty. For our visual audience, rak mehashem, only from a kadosh baruch Hu. Do you need more? Enough? You like it? It's not me. This is the Torah talking. I'm just a tape recorder. I'm telling you what it says. So, enhancing the observance of the Shabbat. I don't even know where to start from. But as the Shalom HaMelech says, Yodea Sadiq Nefesh Vehemto. Each person knows. For ladies could be lighting candle, candle lighting on Shabbat on a timely manner. For men could be welcoming the Shabbat on time, dressing properly in honor of Shabbat, not doing things which are obviously we know that are off limits on the Shabbat, if it's cell phone, driving, etc. In other words, the sky is the limit, but something needs to be done. Somebody suggested, I think it came from Israel in the past, the concept of ladies welcoming the Shabbat five minutes earlier. That's a beautiful suggestion. Mm -hmm. But for some ladies who don't light the candles on don't light on time, lighting on time is an upgrade. I'm only throwing a couple of ideas. And why do I bring the ladies and the men? Because there were casualties of both genders. Men and women died. It doesn't mean if men only or ladies only is different. Has the shalom. But I'm only just building up the case of telling us that it's everyone's responsibility to try to do something. For some people, the Baruch Hashem come to shul, don't drive, they observe the Shabbat nicely, make your Shabbat table a bit better, nicer, warmer, avoid talking topics which are not relevant to the holiness of the Shabbat, the like business, investments, etc. In other words, each person, if it's honest by themselves, between themselves, nobody needs to know what did you do in memory or in honor of these wonderful souls. Because at the end of the day, irrelevant of their synagogue affiliation, irrelevant of whatever what's going on there that day, which many people started to make uh, conclusions or assumptions of why did it happen and where did it happen. But at the end of the day, when this criminal came to take the life, he didn't select it. Oh, you fruit, you're not fruit. You're conservative, you reform, you orthodox, you liberal, you reconstructionist, whatever different labels are today. He came with one goal and one goal only. Yehudim. Right. Now, let's continue. <laughs> so we discuss about enhancing the Shabbat in the men's department, ladies' department. But it also happened in a temple. Now, some people call it synagogue, some people call it temple, some people call it house of worship. It's a different topic. If each word that I mention has a different meaning. But bottom line, in their mind, it happened in a place where people come to try to connect with Hashem. That they observe Allah in a different way, they are not guilty. They are not better. The leadership carries liability to on those movements. But this is not the topic of the movements. This is a topic about the loss of innocent Jewish lives. I said this last night. We need to enhance 
our honor to the synagogue because throughout history many times Jewish people were massacred in the Bet HaMikdash the Bet HaMikdash the holy temple of Jerusalem you know how many Jews were defiled and killed and tortured in the Bet HaMikdash upon the destruction blood was flowing freely in Europe in the Inquisition this is not different when blood is spilled in a synagogue that is the ultimate level of defiling a place so what can we do from here enhance our decorum and behavior in the synagogue which I believe most people do but let's be honest we talk during prayers sometimes we check our cell phones during prayers and as I said last night try for an hour a day while you pray put the cell phone in mute put the cell phone on vibrate leave the cell phone in your locker leave the cell phone in your car because guess what when we pray and we look at the cell phone we are having like the, the Wi-Fi is gone how many times he's trying to log in to have the live video and then it freezes or there is no signal guess what every time we use the phone during <coughs> prayer we lose our connectivity with Akadosh Baruch Hu. and I'm not talking about those who pray from a cell phone I already said yesterday it is not the ideal for many reasons you take it to the bathroom the same screen shows things which are inappropriate we don't have to go any further but I think that we need to understand obviously you're in an airport you're traveling etc so somebody after I gave this speech last night asked me Rabbi I look I pray the Amidah and in the middle of the Amidah I take off my cell phone and I start looking for a special prayer I said you know what from now on don't say the special prayer keep the cell phone in your pocket and he had recognized he says yeah suddenly i see a text suddenly i see a whatsapp suddenly i see an email and more than once i'm going there instead of my prayer so he asked me so what do i do with the prayer he says very simple what is the prayer for i ask him what is this prayer that you look on your cell phone for he says a prayer for refua. i said no problem Say the prayer in your own words. What do you think? Hashem doesn't understand your own words? Sometimes your own words have more meaning than a textbook written extra prayer. Not to minimize that. The prayer is in the prayer book in order to make it easy for us. But what if you don't have access? And the option is, do I look or I continue for my siddur? The short answer will be, Continue from your Siddur. Besides the spiritual benefits that brings, it doesn't disturb you from our prayers. It's a Siddur. In some Siddurim, yes. Some Siddurim, no. That's the, that's the situation with this fellow. Let's continue. There is another area that there is always room to improve. And this is especially for the wonderful ladies. The topic of semiut, modesty. When a person comes to Shul, we are coming to the house of Hashem. We all agree on that? We come into the house of Hashem. You come to see the kings. Have you ever seen the Queen of England or the Princess of Wales and the many members of the monarchy that they have especially in Europe, how they are dressed, always presentable. No way that they will ever dress in a way, God forbid, that is provocative or too tight or too revealing. Why not? Because they understand that a proper dress code brings honor to the person. And we know very well that the topic of modesty, of semi old in garments, may be a bit more challenging for a woman, for a lady, 
than for a man. But the reality of life is that when a person comes to the Beta Knesset and we come to the house of Hashem, we come to pray to connect to Akadosh Baruch Hu, the lack of modesty also affects the holiness of the place. So we talk about cell phones, we talk about dress code, and we talk about talking during certain types of the prayer, like the Kaddish, Chazara, Sefer Torah, that we need to avoid. We need to avoid the Trapotai. And I know that this is not the first time I'm talking about this topic, but it requires reinforcement. He said, like your wife, how many times a day, or a week, or a month, or a year, you say to your wife, I love you? Don't tell me once a year. <laughs> Don't tell me once a month. Don't tell me once a week. I hope you do it several times a day. In the morning, in the night, in the middle of the day. I hope. I don't have to teach you this, you can teach me. All right, I'm sure you do it. Rabotai, when we come to the shul and we have a nice and respectful behavior and dress code, we are professing the ultimate kavod and love to Akadosh Baruch. That is how we enhance the holiness of the synagogue. Because if the synagogue was defiled by the spilling of Jewish blood, now we need to clean up the mess. And the cleaning, I'm not talking about bringing the CSI to clean, you know, a, a, the place. I'm talking about cleaning it with the shuva, with our improvement, with our better enhanced behavior in the synagogue. No one can deny that this tragedy united the Jewish people. You have no idea how many thousands of people from Pittsburgh and the surrounding cities, they travel there to be together, to say Kaddish, to attend the funerals, to attend the eulogies, and to show support for our brethren up there. So if a tragedy is what causes our unity to come, so it means that we are not united. It means that we are fighting with each other too much. And people dislike each other, but we don't have to go far. This statement includes marriage. Includes the topic of marriage. How many times husband and wife fight and argue and planning to get divorced and they mistreat each other. So you want to start with unity, start with your home. If you work on your home, and God forbid, I'm not implying to anyone that anybody here in this room or in the audience may have Shalom Bali issues. But again, we must go back to the earlier statement. Only you know what's happening in your home. Nobody else knows. I happen to know a lot of Shalom Bayit problems because people come to me. And as a rabbi, we try to prevent divorce. As a rabbi, we try to guide them accordingly. As a rabbi, we try to calm things between husband and wife. But unfortunately, unfortunately, the divorce rate in the Jewish world today perhaps is the highest of Jewish history. Scary stuff. May you never know this, but I know this. And many other wonderful dear friends of mine and colleagues will tell you the same thing. Call the Bedins to get divorced. Okay, we book through November 18th. And they do three a day, max. Four sometimes. We book. What does it mean? Make a calculation. Per week, 20 couples or 15 couples 
are contemplating getting divorced. That's scary. Because besides all the drama that divorce brings, there are new victims called the children in the case of young children. Hasve Shalom. So we want to start reactivating unity. Start from the home. Apologize to your wife. Or let the wife apologize to the husband. Because although we cast the blame most of the time to the husband, but ladies need to be honest with themselves too. Ladies also, with their way and attitude sometimes, can ignite the fire. And I hope that the ladies don't take it in an offensive manner. But again, I'm telling you now from professional experience that it takes two to tango. Sometimes the improvement is more from him. Sometimes the improvement must be from her. But one thing is for sure, they both need to be willing to work out in a marriage. Otherwise, we're gonna have a lot of children that suffer because of this. If Baruch Hashem, our unity at home and love and friendship and harmony, Be'ezat Hashem is in the right track, so then we need to move on to the next level. How is our relationship with people? How do we treat people? How do we speak to people? Because at the end of the day, Rabotai, and I said this through the days of the Omer, to in the counting of the Omer, we said this through the 30 days of the month of Elul in the class of the Tomer de Borah, how much emphasis is given to interpersonal relationships. A tremendous amount of emphasis is given in the Torah by how is our relationship with our peers, with our fellow men. Don't think for a moment that we can separate my godly relationship and my human relationship. They go together. Because the moment that we separate them, then begins the Balagan, as we say. So we discuss about unity. Unity in synagogues. Sometimes people in the synagogue itself, they argue with each other for nonsense. Who has the final word? Who makes the decision? Rabotai. How will you feel to know that because of Mahloket in synagogues, this tragedy happened. Relax. If the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed because of lack of unity among people, so this incident or tragedy could have happened because of the unity. And how do we know this? Because this tragedy brought unity. You understand? You cannot separate the facts from the reality. As I said in the earlier part of the class today, Shabbat, men and women, in a synagogue, unity. All this is telling us that these are the areas that we need to improve as a community, as a nation. So somebody may say, are you a prophet? I'm not a prophet. I'm not a son of a prophet. I'm not a grandson of a prophet, but I only go by what the Torah tells you. If there is an issue in a certain area, you need to find the root. I'll tell you something. Mechida. There is a sign there. Can I have it, please? Yes. I apologize for the delay, 38 minutes into the class. So this class has been graciously sponsored and donated by actually the class and the breakfast. Uh, donated by an anonymous sponsor. Thank you very much, whoever may have been. Thank you for the video audience, anonymous sponsor. Thank you very much. So, one day, and this I read in the book of Shalom Bayit. 
and I found it to be so emet. So emet. And I hinted to this earlier when I mentioned the statement of the Talmud that says, Hapeshe Asar, Hapeshe Hitir. The mouth that says something is forbidden is the same mouth that says something is permissible. The Hafez Haim says, why so much emphasis is done or given when it comes to the topic of Shemirat Halashon, of how does the person speak? Short answer, he says, because the better we speak, and when I mean better, I mean clean, no vulgarity, no profanity, no gossip, no slander, no, no, no narcissistic type of talking, etc., or demeaning type of talking, the more pure our tefillah becomes. Because guess what? A mouth that is not clean contaminates the prayer. Is it you want to donate blood? And you have, God forbid, a medical condition. Will they accept your blood? Why not? You're a nice fellow. You came early, you fasted all day, and now you want to donate blood. But what they tell you, sorry, I cannot take your blood. Why not? Because your blood may be contaminated. Maybe. And we don't want that your blood should contaminate another person. And I'm sorry to be so colorful in this example, but the Hafez Haim writes that this is what happens to our prayers. The mouth is a very powerful weapon. It can build when you use it properly. You compliment someone, you talk in a respectful way, you are nice when you talk. Believe me, you can melt the hunchback of a camel when you speak properly. Even if you want to get something from a customer service, you talk to them nice, oh, yeah. you'll see what happens. I try this more than once. Respectfully, and the other day, I'm not sure if I told you this story, I'm talking to a fellow for something online, not online, on the phone. I don't know who he is, I, he doesn't know me. He called me for something from a company. And uh, I talk, I talk, and he says, can we continue talking? I said, but I think that we settled, we took care of the matter. Yes, but I feel so good talking to you. Now, I'm not bragging about it. But this is the way we should be all. I said to him, good morning. Thank you for your help. I really appreciate your effort in helping me. He says, you made my day. And this is somebody, I don't know where, Alabama, Missouri, Montana. You understand? What did it take? Pleasant way of talking. You may say, Rabbi, you the rabbi, you're supposed to be that way. <coughs> no, Rahim, you also supposed to be the way. Whatever we say and we learn, it's not. Sure, if you need to be the way, I need to be a thousand times more than what a normal person is. And I cannot afford one millimeter of inappropriate behavior or inappropriate way of speaking. So this is multi-system for each and every one of us. It doesn't matter your age, it doesn't matter your gender. It doesn't matter where you come from. When a person speaks properly, Hashem becomes, he opens the door. Listen, Hashem allowed his name to be erased in order to preserve shalom between husband and wife. You're allowed to erase God's name. Which if I have this Siddur, <laughs> prayer book, and I want to get rid of it, what do I need to do? I need to bury the book. I need to put it in the Geniza, and whenever they come, we'll pick it up. But what happens when there is a suspicion that the husband suspects that his wife had inappropriate behavior? You know what the Torah tells you? Take a piece of parchment, Write a verse from the Torah that has a Shem's name. Take a cup of water 
put the parchment inside, let the ink be erased, the water now will become drink, and drink from this cup. <coughs> this is the topic of Sota. This is the topic of the Sota in our Torah. God says, if drinking and the reaction that comes after the drinking, because the Torah tells you the reaction, if God forbid the inappropriate behavior took place, her days were counted. And even if they extended for a while, they were not the best living. But if Baruch Hashem, nothing happened, and everything is holy and everything is pure, suddenly these same waters of destruction became the waters of salvation. Now she will become pregnant. Now if she had girls, she will have boys. And if she will have boys, now she will have them beautiful and healthy and nice and, and, and full term. In other words, the same water of destruction can become the same water of salvation. And that's what I derive all the topics that they are not new. But you know what? Divre Torah Sedechim Hizuk. Torah requires constant reinforcement. And I probably am not saying nothing that we don't know. But I will have to say one more thing that I started to mention. The other day, maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, somebody comes to me and he says, I have a suspicion about my wife. Hmm. Rabbis don't do only weddings. <laughs> weddings is the easiest part of the day. Berit Mila, beautiful. Pidiona Ben, Hanukkah Tabait, happy, happy events. But sometimes we deal with headaches. Addiction, spousal abuse, problem with the kids in school, children misbehaving, parnasa problems, which are the easiest one to save because it doesn't affect human life. You need to pray. You need to make the effort. So this fellow shows me what brought up his suspicions. So he showed me on the phone and when he shows me on the phone, he also shows me what is he looking at in the phone. I said, stop. Your problem is happening because you are fooling around. How dare, Rabbi? How can you tell me that? I said, listen, based on the pictures that you have in your cell phone, you're not a sadiq neither. I'm only looking. Guess what? The books of Shalom Bayit say this clearly. When there is a spiritual deficiency on the husband, it affects the wife. And the wife reacts about it. And many times, she's reacting in such a hard way. I'm a nice person. I sleep at home every day. I pay all the bills. We go on vacation. She's crazy. She's not crazy. With your behavior outside of your home, with your eyes or your berit milah, you created a breach in the sanctity of marriage. And that is what prompts sometimes all known reasons of why the wife reacts in an extreme manner. We can go on in this topic, but I don't think that I need to. Baruch Hashem, I think that the class today was serious, but very practical in understanding that the best answer to this tragedy is self-improvement. And the worst will be remaining the same. Remaining the same, God forbid, I don't want to say the end of the statement. 
but recognizing and working even on one of the two points that I mentioned, Hashem <coughs> will send God a message. Amen. God will listen to you. Amen. Do me a favor. Give us another chance. Protect us. Make sure that all the plans of our enemies will disappear. <coughs> As Shalom Melech writes, and it says, It says, The Goim will plant things to destroy the Jewish people. Daveru Davar, they will talk. But as I said before, today you don't need to talk. Today you can text. Today you can post. And will not happen in reality. Why not? Ki imanu el. Because Hashem is with us. But, in order for Hashem to be with us, we need to set up the proper stage at any level that you can. If it's at home, if it's in the synagogue, if it's on the street. And by Ezat Hashem, let us hope that uh, Hashem will avenge the blood Amen. and Hashem take care of uh, these 11 Neshamot. Amen. Plus, obviously, the unfortunate tragedy of the land of Israel. And by Ezat Hashem, Amen. May death be abolished forever. Amen. <laughs> And Akadosh Baruch Hu will wipe away the tears Amen. from everyone's face. Amen. Have a lovely Shabbat Shalom. Baruch Adonai Le'olam.